Hello everybody, Morbtron here. This is going to be my hot take on Season 9, or my first impressions on Season of Dawn. And first thing I want to say is, if you play this game, and you played a decent amount, yes, I think the season is m way more than worth the $10 that Bungie put on it as a price tag. Uh, I think other companies in the past have put on a much larger price tag for a lot less content. And what we have here for $10 is way worth it. We have a new activity, we have new weapons and armor, new mods, new a new like short campaign to save Saint-14, that sort of thing. I think Bungie did good here with this. But uh, I want to start out with saying that the Sundial was way, way better than Vex Offensive was last season. Now, granted, the story and everything going along with it is one rolling into the other, which I think is very cool, from one season to play into the next, but Vex Offensive had its issues. It was cool for the first couple runs, you know, just going through, shooting a bunch of Vex in the stomach, aim for the juice box, as Cade would say, um... But it got old very fast. There was no mixing it up. It was always the same thing over and over again, and it was almost impossible to fail it. Actually, I don't think I failed it ever, even queuing with just random blueberries. I don't think anything ever failed a single time. So it became very monotonous, and even in the, uh, the final assault at the end of last season, didn't change much at all except for the last boss, and even then, the mechanics were nearly identical. Minus just what the boss looked like. But so far, the sundial is way, way better, and the bosses should be rotating weekly once more bosses are added in. And I do hope they add in more of the uh, activities in the sundial. So it's kind of, right now, it's kind of like a miniature version of Menagerie. And hopefully, they just add in more filler stuff, more just different activities to do within sundial. So that way, every time you queue up for it, you get kind of a unique experience. Um, but moving on, the new weapons that they've added in with so far with the season, I've got my hands on the new auto rifle, the new sidearm, I've gotten the linear fusion rifle, the grenade launcher. Uh, they all have new unique perks and traits that I think are really, really nice. And some of them even have completely new qualities, like the grenade launcher. Now, I, I assumed that it was just going to be a standard single shot grenade launcher, but it actually like, throws a single thermite wave of fire down on the ground instead of just having it be a regular, you know, aim for the body kind of grenade launcher, like Mountaintop or the Militia's Birthright or any other of the single shot grenade launchers out there. So that's really cool. I like that. It does a decent amount of damage. It's not overpowered. It's just different. And that's cool. And so far, the, the new exotic weapon that we got with the start of the season, it's not terrible, which is great and actually using it is really fun. And I'm going to make a review on it later. Probably later today. We'll see. And, um, yeah, so far, weapons, I would say thumbs up. The weapon archetypes that we have are good, and I cannot wait to grind out more weapons through uh, the obelisk system and the sundial. Uh, the new seasonal armor set does look, I would, in my opinion, a million percent better than last season's. You know, last season we had the Vex enemies covered in leaves and moss, and that's that's neat. You know, the Black Garden stuff is cool, but get that shit off my Guardian. I don't care. It looks bad on a Guardian. The seasonal ornament set as well at the end of the season looks really good, and it builds off of the armor set that we get throughout the rest of the season. Whereas last season it was like, you get this Vex moss and leaf covered armor, and at the end of the season you get this really cool looking Vex armor, and if you look really, really closely, there were similarities, but they didn't really look anything at all like each other. Um, anyway, yeah, the other thing that's a big change that was not expected and is very welcomed is the change to exotic engrams to guarantee giving you something that you don't have until everything is unlocked. And that's fantastic. And then after everything is unlocked, you're not going to get duplicate weapons, because getting a duplicate weapon literally doesn't matter, especially when armor pieces can have stat points on them now, and that sort of thing, and they can have three different element types on them as well. So guaranteeing us not to get a duplicate weapon is fantastic, because getting a duplicate weapon out of an exotic engram feels very shitty. Uh, and then tweaks and updates to the solar subclasses are very welcomed as well. Now, I personally have only had the time to mess around over my Titan, but from a Titan's perspective, 
you know, the changes to any of the Sunbreaker trees. You know, we have the top tree Sunbreaker, get the explosive hammer's damage retuned, and the explosion is bigger, and that's cool, because more explosions is fun. And uh, the middle tree, it got tweaked and updated and stuff like that, and it, it feels better than it did before, but I would say it just feels, everything just got, in, just increased a little bit on how good it feels. It still has its issues with going over different types of terrain with the slam attack, but um, also having your guardian actually stay on target in the spin move is pretty difficult um, and sometimes impossible the way the game's physics works, but oh well, win some, you lose some, I guess. Bottom tree sunbreaker, having the ability to infinitely chain sunspots adds a skill gap for just even PvE play that is, I think, pretty much unmatched with any other subclass tree in the game. That's pretty cool. And I've talked to people that main warlocks and hunters, and they're having a good time as well. The weighted throwing knife is fantastic, I've heard, and the changes to Dawnblade are really entertaining, and the melee is good, and being able to fly through the air shooting your guns in PvE is fun. Um, I imagine in Crucible it's less fun, and it's going to have really niche uses. Being flying through the air makes you an easy target. Um, but you probably surprise some people a couple times and make some pretty good plays. Uh, now, the negative, or the, the, the bad things that I have to say about the Season 9, Season of Dawn stuff is the new armor mod slots in the new seasonal armor. You know, we have the, um, the Vex offensive style mods last season um, or the Dreambane stuff where you can only slot in the Nightmare mo uh, Hunter mods in that armor. Now that was one thing um, because that armor set was specifically for that or you know the raid armor has the, the raid mods that slot into it and you can also put them in the Dreambane, mo uh, Dreambane armor if I remember correctly. That's another thing. That's fine. I understand that. Not every piece of armor had that mod slot. But having the new uh, seasonal armor this season have its own new mod set is interesting. You know, these new you know, negative and positive mods with the charged with light system. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet because I don't have... I only have one of the mods. Um, it's probably going to be pretty cool to play with and having a more dynamic gameplay... Uh, style in PvE, and hopefully it doesn't affect Crucible to the point where it's a new style of cheese, but we'll see. Um, but what I don't like is that this new mod slot, or this new, the new mods come out, and we can't put them in last season's armor. Last season, you know, I, I ground out a bunch of raid armor that had really, really high stats on it, and I really enjoyed it. But now it, they're useless if I want to use the new armor mods. And I don't feel like that's the way to go. You know, new season mods are great, but let me put them on my armor from previous seasons, as long as it's armor 2.0. We don't need armor 2.0 with season 8, and then armor 2.1 with season 9, and then next season, armor 2.2. Let us keep our nice armor, and keep it valuable, and let us put, you know, new mods in it, if you're going to have a new tweaked style of mod for the season. And then we move on to the seasonal artifact. You know, that was the big thing going into year three of Destiny 2 was the seasonal artifact. And last season was kind of the test. They wanted to see how things were going to work out. And so I think a lot of us gave them a lot of slack with how things were. And the end of the season in Crucible specifically got incredibly cheesy with the way the arc battery worked out and Thunder Coil and that sort of thing. Um, it just wasn't very fun. For me, anyway. I like gunfights. I don't like, you know, hunters dodging and getting all their health back and having immunity frames and all this other bullshit, basically. Or having one-hit punch melee abilities for everybody with Thunder Coil. Felt pretty bad as well. Um, but they did make some tweaks going into this season. So, you know, the new weapon types being highlighted uh, kind of shakes things up a bit for PvE. In the with the changes to the early levels of the artifact, you know how last season we had SMGs, auto rifles, hand cannons being highlighted. Um, this season we have longer range weapons like bows, scout rifles, pulse rifles, 
Uh, we still have auto rifle for overload, but everything else has been kind of mixed up. That's cool. That's fine. I, I can appreciate that. Um, but the final tier for the artifact will have the same issues and cheese for Crucible as it did last season. Only now, instead of Arc Battery, we have Void Battery. And instead of Thunder Coil, we have this, a solar version of the same damn thing. I, I just don't understand how Bungie could look at what was happening last season in Crucible with Thunder Coil and Arc Battery and think that that was okay to just carry over onto the next season with a new coat of paint on it. You know, on top of the artifact providing extra cheese for the Crucible, again this season there really just wasn't any shakeup at all going into the PvP meta. Granted, we did get a nerf to One-Eyed Mask, a small one, and Recluse, but overall the meta has not changed. Bungie stated that going into Shadowkeep they had a renewed focus on PvP. If that renewed focus is finally nerfing the things that were overpowered for an entire year, and giving us a few old Destiny 1 maps and one new map, along with the game mode from Destiny 1, things really aren't going to be that different. But, at the very least, they aren't completely ignoring PvP like they did for the entirety of Shadowkeep. I mean, not Shadowkeep. Forsaken. There we go. So yeah, that's my, that's my PvP rant. I really wish that Bungie would pay more attention to Crucible. I think that PvE is in a great spot so far in Shadowkeep Year 3, you know, Season 8 and Season 9. The PvP, uh, PvP content's been lacking, but the PvE content has been fantastic. So there you go. If you're looking for a competitive PvP game, I mean, Destiny has never been it, but I at least want something that's not completely full of cheese. I do enjoy the supers and the abilities and things like that, but I don't like, you know, people having immunity frames. I don't enjoy wall hacks. I don't enjoy any of that bullshit. So, oh well. Um, I guess we'll see what the future holds for PvP. Hopefully Bungie pulls their head out of the sand and actually sees some of these issues. Um, oh well. well. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But PvE content, thumbs up. I would say double thumbs up for that. And I would, overall, I would give, if, if we're going out of a 10, out of a 10 count here, I would give this, uh, so far, I'm, I'm foreseeing that we're going to have like an 8 out of 10 season here. Um, but yeah, that is it for this video. So if you want to show your support, all that stuff, hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. If you are new here, subscribe for more Destiny content. But do not forget to have a good day, everybody. And I will catch you all next time.